today we are going to basically start off um, i mean as an officially the uh, you know the working and the basics of the predicate firewall okay now over here what we are what we will be discussing is the um, high level overview okay uh, what uh, does firewall is all about and everything about the firewall okay give me one quick second um okay Okay, so we are going to start off with the high level overview and uh, we are going to basically talk about the platform as in, you know, the what is the hardware architecture of the 48 firewall because a lot of people do talk about, you know, what's the um, architecture looks like and how is it built and, uh, and uh, you know, around 40 to 50 percent in the interview as well, sometimes people do ask that. So if anybody is basically looking for an L2 role or an L3 role, right? like an expert in one of the fields, then over there, this question does um, is asked. Okay, so identify the features of FortiGate in a virtual network and understand FortiGate security processing unit SPU. Okay, so that's very important. The SPU is basically, um, you know, group of hardware chips, which is, um, which makes uh, the FortiGate firewall uh, performance um, I mean, quite good. And uh, the performance and because at end of the day, all the traffic is being handled by your CPU, right? But when it comes to the FortiGate, the way it is designed, the way the SPUs are designed is that even once the traffic hits your FortiGate firewall, it goes through your CPU, and then the CPU goes and uh, you know um, over uh, you know um, just share this load to the rest of the hardware chips. Now, what are those chips and how do they work? Uh, let's talk about that as well. Okay, all right, so. Okay, so the first thing is the modern context of the network security. So when I say modern context, right, um, there was a time where uh, the FortiGate, or as in not even the FortiGate, uh, there was a time when whenever we wanted to talk about, um, you know, uh, network security, it was all about edge, um, you know, a firewall which is maybe installed at the edge, okay, and all the, you know, security features was implemented over there, right? And if in case we wanted to, you know, make any changes, uh, that was to be done at the edge level. Okay, so I mean, let's say for example, this is your LAN. Okay, all the traffic will be going through, let's say a router, then you have a firewall over here. And this firewall is basically, basically connected with the ISP. Okay, so all the security profiles that you can think of, right? Those security profiles were all implemented over here. Okay, so everything, anything that you wanted to change, it has to be done over here. Okay, it was understood that whatever is over here, this section, this is trusted. Okay, blindly it was trusted. That is where uh, people or I would say potential hackers uh, started to look upon that, okay, this is the place where you can exploit because if you get into over here, uh, then it doesn't matter if the fire, wherever the firewall is implemented doesn't matter. Right. But that was traditional. The modern context of uh, security has changed a lot. It doesn't really matter nowadays that are you a part of the LAN segment or are you a part of a DMZ segment? The amount of security implementations or the scanning which will be done is, um, you know, on a, on a very uh, similar patterns. Right. So it's like a zero trust based game. Right. So if you look into over here as well, the, for, uh, the this line says, Today's firewalls are designed in response to multifaceted and multi-device environments with no identifiable parameters. Absolutely. Because it is so complex and it is becoming like a mesh environment where everybody is connected to everybody in some way or the other. Right? So it is very diff difficult to understand from where a potential threat could basically come. Right? So that is why the complexity is increasing and the amount of security that needs to be implemented has also to be increased, right? So, you know, mobile workforce, partners accessing your network services, public and private clouds, in IoT, Internet of Things, bring your own device, right? These are, these are a part of our daily job right now. Maybe 10 years back, it was still as at a position where it was like, you know, only a couple of companies was doing it, or maybe, you know, companies who have a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, if, if the cost was not really a problem, those companies would go, you know, the top 100 companies or the top 50 companies, right? But now it's this, this is like, this is like for everyone, 
it's like basic necessity for all the companies out there right so that's why the uh, amount of complexity in a network has increased a lot and that is why the demand of network security has increased a lot as well people who are people people who knows how to work on a firewall not just that people who knows how to design uh, the firewall how to uh, look for an issue how to identify an issue figure out the problem and fix it permanently that's what people are looking for in the um, in the interviews as well so that is what the modern context is all about now if you look over here it says the firewalls are expected to perform different functions within a network absolutely different deployment modes distribution enterprise next generation internal segmentation data center right so basically you call this as ngfw this is isfw and this is dcfw okay so these are acronyms but point is over here is that firewall is still the same but they are doing multiple uh, functions at multiple locations so if uh, you have a different so just just to give you an example it's just a one liner we can discuss this maybe um in the question and answer round or maybe uh, in the coming classes so just a one liner next generation firewall is a play, is basically a firewall which um functions on application control okay um, we are going to discuss it anyway so application control and ips okay that's the ngfw so this is like, uh, so what i'm talking is basically something which is mandatory not optional okay then you have isfw internal segmentation okay so here you can you know work with the web filters the dns filters um you know the anti viruses and all that stuff okay so that is isfw then you have the dcfw which is the data center again this works uh, this works basically sorry so this works basically on the ieps section okay because that is what you know the data center is all about so if you have a dc farm you need to have an ips i mean that's that's this it, it may be a couple of years back we could think you know let's implement i ips or an ids but now it's like mandatory right you need to have an ips you need to know that what kind of traffic is coming to your data center right so and with the isfw which is internal segmentation whatever traffic which is going out if it is a user traffic you have to apply a web filter you need to know what kind of um, you know um, um Uh, websites or categories he is basically going for what kind of uh, traffic or what kind of website he is going to what what kind of uh, um you know uh, production environment uh, what is the top level of um, websites which is being accessed so web filtering dns filtering anti viruses you know to block the malicious content they are part of isfw right ngfw is all about application control application sensitive traffic right so if you have custom applications or let's say your servers have custom applications which require um which basically want which in which where you want that only let's say updated adobe um, readers would be able to log in only updated web browser should be able to log in so those are the places where application control comes in right we'll anyway talk about all these things individually in the coming classes but then uh, just to give you a one liner or a two liner of what exactly the next generation firewall isfw and dcfw is and what other different design scenarios they can be a part of okay so every so every firewall has a different design scenario okay whether it is ngfw isfw or dcfw we can talk about this maybe in the q and a round okay then you have the dns dhcp web filter ips and so on so basically these are the functionalities which is being implemented today and it's again it's like a basic necessity okay every traffic which is going out or which is maybe accessing some critical traffic or sorry critical resource it has to be applied okay so that's why when i say modern com- context of network security it's very very complex okay all right so let's move ahead right architecture design very important see over here what hap- what is uh, the role of your fortigate firewall is that over here see, th- see this is basically hardware okay um let me give you an analogy so you have a windows sorry let's say let's say you have a laptop right now laptop is a hardware 
right? Whatever your CPU and memory is, let's say RAM, that's hardware for you, right? On top of this, you have an operating system, let's say Windows, all right? And on top of this Windows, you have applications, you know, such as um, Office, um, Notepad, right? So, I mean, there are so many out there, uh, what I had just on the top of my mind. Point over here is that you have hardware, then you have the software, and then you have the uh, features. Same goes to every firewall out there in the world. Okay, that whenever you are comparing, you would basically see there is a hardware out there. Okay, so in our case, SPUs are the security processing units is basically the one which you call as hardware. Okay, now on top of that, you have the operating system 40 OS, which is your software. All right, and then you have the antivirus and the web filter and the IPS, which is basically your features, right? So, but then FortiGate, you will call this as UTM, Unified Threat Management, right? So this is what we are talking about, that whenever we are talking about the architecture, this is what it, it basically means, that you have uh, something which uh, makes you different from the other vendors out there, right? So the security processing unit, this is what makes a FortiGate different from the other vendors out there. Then you have the 40 OS, which is again, it's an operating system, all right, vendor specific, and then you have these things. So UTM is one thing which is similar to all the firewalls out there. Uh, the only thing which is different is the way you configure them. That is it, okay? So now the security processing unit is basically those uh, chips, okay? Which is um, dedicatedly defined or dedicatedly configured to handle uh, your traffic, okay? So, um, one so most FortiGate models have um, uh, one or more specialized circuits and you call them as ASIC or 40 ASIC, okay? So you have something which is called as, um, um, let's say, oops. Um, I don't know how does that happen. So something as CP, then you have something which is SP, then you have something which is NP. So content processor, security processor, network processor, right? So those are the hardware chips. Okay. Now these hardware chips are, we are basically, you know, these hardware chips are mm -hmm. the one which we are, you know, having on the device itself. And these are used for, you know, um, making sure the traffic is being handled correctly and in the and most fastestly basically the fast path that is what you can talk okay and you guys give me one minute hold on okay sorry i was getting a call okay so now uh again so hardware chips we are going to talk about this in the next slide and then we have the 40 os now the 40 os is basically um we are as of now working with 7.0 so 7.0 is the one which is uh, stable enough um i think last week we uh, the fortnet released 7.2 which is having bundles of new features and um, i was going through the feature guide and i was really really impressed about the new features i'm so excited i was thinking to you know maybe integrate that in the in the course itself so that you guys can also know what is the latest uh, coming up in the 7.2 and you will get trained on 7.2 so maybe by two months you can you know go ahead and shout i, I am trained on 7.2 so people or any company who out there who are looking for you know for 7.2 or fortigate firewall on the latest uh, software you would be the first people who will be you know working on that so i'll see you i'll see if i can integrate that so uh, if you guys want do do let me know so i'm if everyone you know agrees to it, probably I'll integrate the 7.0 and 7.2 so that you'll be able to understand what are the difference between 7.0 and 7.2 and what are the added features and functionalities of the 7.2 as well, right? So you will be getting trained on the certification. You'll also get to know what is new, right? Okay, and then you get the UTM functionalities, which is antivirus, web filtering, and IPS. 
you have dedicated classes on these so we'll not uh, talk in depth about these but these are basically your functionalities which work on top of your operating system just like you have the hardware on top of the hardware you have the operating system which is uh, the 40 os right now 40 os is one thing which is um, similar mostly similar on all the devices doesn't matter if it's a small device or a uh, or a high end device the only difference would be the number of functionality that that particular device can handle obviously the ha higher end would be able to ha handle much uh, much more features and functionalities but the operating system the way you configure that basically remains the same okay all right so let's move on okay see now we are talking about something which is called as the deployment uh, you know deployment of the fortigate firewall so you have uh, the fortigate um, in the in the vm category okay over here so this is what we are even getting trained on as well that we are using the fortigate vm so same features as physical appliance except the spu yes of course because spu is something which is on a hardware right now you cannot imitate a hardware on the virtual machine because that is something which is a i mean you cannot imitate a hardware chip on a virtual machine right so again the implementations the functionalities features everything exactly remains the same the only thing different with the vm is that you will not have the SVUs. okay now you have something which is um a vmx which is a subset of features for the vmware and um, the fortigate file well this was made for uh, you know um if you have uh, vmware set up in your um, environment then probably you will be going with the vmx as compared to vm okay then you have the fortigate connector for cisco aci uh that's basically for if you have an implementation where a lot of uh, you know you have uh, in implementation of monitoring devices and you have splunk and you have uh, let's say citrix and all these kind of devices then you need um, an aci or uh, or basically now now we are talking about apis where you need to integrate your fortigate firewall with all those devices so that you will be able to uh, understand the amount of traffic which is bypassing um, with the right kind of security and making sure that all of the firewall all of the devices are even integrated with the um, firewall a fortigate firewall with your um, apis in place Yeah, so that's what I was talking about. The SPUs. So SPUs again, it's hardware acceleration offload. Okay, what I basically mean is, then when I say hardware acceleration offload, in very simplistic terms, this basically means all the traffic which is going to your oopsie, hold on, all the traffic which is going to your CPU, right? I mean, initially everything will be handled by your CPU and it will keep on handling the traffic, but uh, with having the SPUs in the picture, what happens is the traffic goes to your CPU and then from the CPU, it goes to the right SPUs. Okay. Now SPU handles all the traffic. So CPU remains um, free of uh, all kind of uh, traffic and it is basically ready for anything which is new. Okay. All right. So now you have processors. Now processes are again divided into three categories, which is content processors, security process and network processors. Okay. We're going to talk about this uh, in the next slide, but um, you have NP7, NP6 sessions can be viewed by enabling per session accounting. So how to view those, you can go through in the dashboard. And under the dashboard, you have the interface monitoring. Under the interface mon monitoring, you'll be able to know how much of the traffic is being handled by the SVs, okay? And how much traffic is hand handled by N Turbo. Again, these are hardware ASIC chips, and uh, it will tell you that how much traffic is being handled over here. So let's, for example, it comes up around 30%. So basically means only 30% of your traffic is being uh, transferred to your SQs, right? So maybe you might need to check whether the, maybe you made some changes and that is why it is like that or what is the cause? Because it should be anything above 70 or 80%, it's supposed to be. But again, it on depends on the, uh, what kind of, uh, you know, setup that you have. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit deep about the content security network and all these things. See, um, um, maybe in the interviews you might be asked about what is um, CP and NP and all these things. So see, over here, let's talk about the content processor first. Okay. See, uh, when it comes to content processor, 
it's all about the encryption and decryption okay it's content right so all the kind of scanning which happens so high speed content inspection okay not bound to interface this is very important see it is a content processor that is is not mapped to an interface okay so it's not like that only when the traffic is hitting some specific interface um, you know it will go to your content processor no content processor is a chip which is uh, embedded in the hardware so that all the traffic will go through it okay and it is closer to the application so what i mean is that uh, whatever the application level traffic is right what kind of application we are using and if you want to allow or block some specific kind of applications right so content processor is the one that will be doing the job for you okay any kind of encryption that needs to happen any kind of decryption that needs to be happen that will be taken care by your content processor ssl is one of that okay antivirus again so uh, to scan the contents antivirus basically takes help of your content processor right so if in case in an interview people ask you about you know what exactly the content processor does so we, you can say that oh, you know in the security profiles you have antivirus um, content processor makes basically uh, is the background or is the backbone of the antivirus so it's, it scans on the traffic and it's the one of the most important thing is that it is not uh, based on any interface so it is interface free so all the traffic has to go through it okay and Okay. Now, so the next is the security processor. Now in the security processor over here, directly attached to the network interfaces, increase the system performance by accelerating the IPs. Okay. See the security processor. So whenever you are going to look into any of the 48 firewall, right? So do one thing, um, you know, whatever model of your 48 firewall you have in your, um, you know, office, just look for the data sheet and see um do do they have any security processors or not what kind of content processor they have so you might get some cp9 or cp6 or maybe cp10 or whatever it is you'll, you'll get to know okay and you let me know so i'll probably share some articles that could help you understand more about your current firewall that you have implemented okay so security processor basically is something which is applied on the network interface okay it is directly on the network interface it basically helps to accelerate the ips okay so whatever the ips signatures is it is going to make sure that the security processor takes uh, i mean handles that traffic so what happens is rather than cpu doing the job for you security processor is doing that so it make it, it becomes much more faster as compared to cpu why because cpu has to handle all the other kind of traffic the new traffic is also coming in but over here it is dedicated the security processor so the the way of processing the amount of processing handled by the security processor if you compare that to cpu is much more faster okay okay now um next is the network processor now network processor is um again you know at the network level packet processing np7 provided by n turbo so you we saw that in the in the last slide right directly attached to network interface okay so now we know when it comes to sp and uh, network processor this these are the two things which is um, directly connected to your interfaces okay so again um, np7 is one of the example of a network processor it now depending on what model that you have it could be different okay now packet processing so when i say packet processing basically it's everything which has to do with layer 3 okay how how frequently how um, quickly you can process the traffic right it is being handled by your network processor okay now a question comes up that can uh, i mean if there is a traffic which is going out on the internet can more, more than one processor can be applied on it absolutely because if the traffic is coming in, it would be, um, you know, the network processor or the NP7 will do its job. Okay. If you have some kind of scanning into it or some kind of encryption or decryption into it, then content processor will be doing the job. And uh, the next is that um, security processors will, if you have an IPS implemented, then probably security processor will also be added to it. 
So one traffic, but three uh, processors are basically doing the job for you. Okay. So uh, Venkat, is it is it fine now? Are you able to you know match up, or do you want me to slow down a little bit more? I understand that these are a couple of things which is very theoretical and um, you know very new. You know all these kind of processes, how they are functioning and how they are behaving. So it becomes a little challenging, but yes. Um, okay. Network processor. Now we know that whatever at layer three, it will be handled by network processor. One thing. Second is it is directly attached to the network interface, right? So whatever traffic which comes to an interface. Automatically, the network processor is basically handling that. Okay. Now we have something which is called as a system on a chip. Now it's like uh, uh, you know um, jack of all. Okay, where um, if in case you have a very lower model, low end model, then you cannot have a dedicated security processor or a CP or a NP, right? So what happens is um, you would you would get an SOC which is security on a chip. That basically means this guy. <clears throat> so you have the NP over here. Okay, you have the CP over here. You have the general purpose processor over here, the external IO, as in the USB or the Ethernet. So point over here is that it's just one chip, and if, and in that chip there are certain segments uh, being made, and that particular segment is dedicatedly handling a uh, CP or the NP or whatever it is. Right. So again, these are for low end devices. Okay. Optimized performance for entry level. So yeah, in a way, low end. So SOC platforms includes N Turbo as well. So N Turbo is basically nothing over here. See this, this is N Turbo. So when we, when we say N Turbo, N Turbo is network processor. Network processor is N Turbo. N Turbo is network processor. Okay. Hmm. Now let's check. Okay, so which is a more accurate description of a modern firewall? So answer is B, a multifunctional device that inspects network traffic from the perimeter or internally within a network that has many different entry points. Okay, A is a device that inspects network traffic at any at an entry point to the internet and within a simple, <coughs> easily defined network perimeter. No, so those those time are gone. So that is a traditional setup. Second, which solution specific to Fortinet enhances performance, reduces latency for specific features in traffic? So now we all know that it's acceleration hardware or called as SPU. Okay, so make sure that you guys um, know the CP, NP, SP, and Fortisoc. Okay, right. Now let's move on. So that was the high level feature. Okay, you know, an overview of yeah, 10,000. Feet above overview of what exactly the forty gate could be look like. Okay. All right. Now the next is setup decisions, as in um, you know the uh, identifying the factory default settings, selecting an operation mode. Okay, and understand the forty gate relationship with the forty guard. Now what is forty guard? We'll talk about this and distinguish between the live queries and package updates and all that stuff. Okay. All right. So let's see. First thing is modes of operation. All right. Now, see, when I talk about modes of operation, what does it basically mean? You have two options with the FortiGate firewall. You have, you'll get two options. One is called as the NAT. One is called as a transparent. Okay. Now, see, NAT is an OSI layer three router. Okay. Interfaces have IP addresses. Packets are routed by the IP and configured per VDOM. Okay. See, when I say it's a layer three router, this point and this point are like very obvious. Right, configured per VDOM. Now, what is VDOM? See, V stands for virtual. Okay, and uh, DOM stands stands for domain. So basically, you are talking about virtual domain. Okay, people who are coming from Cisco architecture may know a, a terminology which is called as virtual context. Right. How many of you know what is what is virtual context? Just put put yes in the chat box. How many of you know what is virtual context? Okay. Hmm. Jitin, Dinesh, Hari Krishna, Nitin. Okay. So you guys know what is virtual context. Now again, 
uh, virtual context is basically something which is a terminology. Terminology, what means a name, a term given, right? Now, since it is Cisco, you call that virtual context. In FortiGate, you call that virtual domain. So what is virtual domain or virtual context? Nothing but virtual firewall. Okay, now what is virtual firewall again? See, virtual basically means that something which you cannot really uh, touch, right? Not tangible, right? That is virtual. So firewall is again, um, if you, I mean, let's let's take our own example. We are configuring everything in our own lab, right? On top of a VM, right? So can you touch that FortiGate firewall that you have in the lab? No, right? But can you perform all the functions and functionalities of the firewall? Absolutely. Right. So that is what a virtual firewall is that something which you cannot really see, but you cannot, you can uh, make it function inside the network. Uh, so Jitendra says firewall inside a firewall. Absolutely. One line definition. So maybe in an interview, you can also say this. What is a virtual firewall? Firewall inside a firewall. Okay. So, uh, but, but please expand that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. So that is not for you. The other uh, mode of uh, um, firewall is called as transparent now this works at the switch level switch level when i say switch you know this is late oh sorry it's already written okay so it's and working at the layer two okay switch level now <clears throat> when i say layer two we all know that interfaces do not have ips okay because at layer two ips do not i mean ip does not even exist ips exist at layer level layer three level right layer to you have mac addresses right so that is exactly what so they be say same as vcs of pa so i'm not really sure of the palo alto so we says is it like virtual firewall is it is it what in what in palo alto we say that maybe yes okay all right so davy says yes all right so good to know thank you i also know something which is uh, apart from protegate okay so interfaces don't have ip addresses it's about it's basically functions are layer two cannot route packets only forward or block okay what does it mean cannot route only forward see in a way let's say for example this guy is working at a, as a as a layer two okay so you you will not have any ip addresses right so what will happen is the policy or the acl or i mean not acl so let's say firewall rule what you configure will be based on interfaces so let's say for example this is interface 2 and this is interface 3 so you will say a firewall rule for port 2 to port 3 okay that is that is how you'll create the rule in nat mode you'll create the rule with the source ip going to a specific destination IP, right but but it, it's in the NAT mode in the transparent you need to configure on the port level because again no no ips right so transparent now question comes up as in why do i need transparent hmm? it's, it's very valid right it's very general why do i need transparent see a lot of times um, there are certain situations and scenarios where um, uh, a company would like to test a firewall, but they cannot really make any changes in the network itself. Okay. So in that kind of an environment, what you can do is you can implement the firewall at a layer two level. So you do not have to make any changes in the IP level. You will just implement, you'll integrate the firewall and you'll just, you know, start off all the kind of scannings that you have, all the kind of security profiles that you have. And, um, you know, it will be from port, this port to that port. That's it just to know how exactly the firewall is working how much cpu utilization is taking how much memory is being taken up how the for the firewall is behaving how, how what is the performance and all that stuff right so that is that is only one of the situations i'm not saying this is the only situation okay that is one of the situations second situation could be that let's say for example um you are um you know trying to implement um some certain chain i mean you you already have a uh, a different vendor firewall now you have to implement or you let's see you have to migrate all the traffic from that vendor firewall to this predicate firewall now what you do is you implement this whole setup in a date in a in a you know what do you say it's a it's it's like a oh, I, I lost the word what do you call like a lab um 
sorry the lab environment yes so basically what happens is you can implement this in a lab environment a company's lab environment where you can know and understand how the device is functioning you can implement all the configurations over there and then if it is all working fine then you you go ahead and implement that in the production environment okay uh, so Devi says, does the transparent mode has only two interfaces? No, it's not like that. Uh, what happens is that um, you can have multiple interfaces. What I mean is that when we, you will be creating a rule, it will be from one port to other port. That's that's how we'll be creating. Okay. So factory default. So um, guys, I'll be asked answering questions in the next maybe 15 minutes or so so use that link okay put those these questions uh Shinivas, you you can put this question in that link as well okay Let, but then i'll quickly answer this so uh, the Shinivas question says can we implement transparent mode in nat no transparent mode is a different mode nat is a different so these are two individual modes you cannot have one mode inside another mode no okay all right so let's go into the factory default settings now factory default settings again um, whatever firewall that you have, doesn't matter if it's an um, entry level or a mid level or a high end, okay? Uh, whatever firewall that you have, this is the default IP address. Where? At the management interface, okay? So 192.168.1.99 is the IP address by default. Now, again, if it is a high end device and you, let's say you have two management interfaces, right? So in that, in that case, you will have 2.99. Management one will have 1.99 management two will have 2.99 that's how it goes okay um port one or internal interface on entry level that's fine yeah so port one so um again if you have an entry level firewall you will not have an mgmt port so there you will have port one and over there you will have this ip of 192.168.1.99 <coughs> sorry so ping https ssh protocol management enabled so this is enabled by default Okay, it's not that you have to go ahead and enable ping, HTTPS, and SSH. These are enabled by default. Okay, built in DHCP server is enabled on port one or internal interface. Yes, you will see that. And you and most of you guys who have already implemented the NAP, you have already noticed this, but uh, you will see this that once we are configuring and will be uh, you know configuring the lab, you will see that the port one is already by default configured with the DHCP server and you will get an IP address on that. Okay, so only on entry level models that supports DHCP server. Yeah, so yes, so now default login user is admin, password is blank. Not as in B L A N K. No blank as in no nothing. Just just hit enter. Okay, both are case sensitive, so it's not like you can put in admin and it will take it up. No, you need to you need to have all in small. Okay, modify the default blank password. So it's it's like anyway as as soon as you hit enter right it is going to ask you to change the password that's that's given you cannot make you cannot move further without changing the password okay next is can access fortigate on the cli of course um console without the network cli console widget and terminal emulator such as put your data whatever it is so you'll have a console uh port and you can use that to basically access the fortigate firewall on the cli okay so and console is basically dedicated cli you cannot have uh, a gui over there if you want to have gui MGMT port or any other port. If you have configured it, you can use it to use CLI as well as uh, GUI. But uh, console is basically, we all know we are all part of network security. So you all know that console is basically for a out of band management of the device. Okay. Hmm, 40 card subscription. Okay, so um, we are going to talk about the 40 card subscription in the web filtering, but uh, just to give you an, an idea of what exactly this is. Um, so what happens is that um, um, it's it's a server, right? It's basically a server, just like you have, if you want to update your Windows machine, Windows 10, it takes updates, right? Patch management. So it takes updates and patch management from the Windows servers, right? which is available, I mean, Microsoft server, which is available all across the globe, whatever your location is, it doesn't really matter, right? So in the same manner, you have the 40 guard servers, which is available all across the globe and all the kinds of updates. Okay. You will get that from over here. Okay. Now, does it tell you what, um, 
No. Okay. So let me show you. Let me tell you. So antivirus, IPS, application control, web filtering, um, DNS filtering. What else do we have? Mm, yeah. I think I think that's pretty much it, right? So all these and uh, all these UTM features or security features, right? All these features take some data from your Forty Card server. Okay. Uh, major data centers in the North America, Asia, and Europe. That's fine. And um, Fortigate prefers data center in the nearest time zone. Yes, that's that's true. So what happens is that um, whatever wherever your firewall is located and whatever time zone you are located. So the first thing is that it will try to find the server which is in the same time zone. And if in case it is not, then probably whatever is the nearest time zone. Okay. Then package updates, Fortigate, antivirus, and IPS. Yes. So. Oh, it, it did help. Okay. So now see, this is, you can note this down if you want to update.fortigard.net. Okay. So any kind of antivirus updates, any kind of IPS updates, okay. That will be taken care of by update.fortigard.net. This is a question uh, in the NAC code certification. Please learn this. Okay. And TCP443 is being used for that. Now live queries. What is live queries? Live queries are part of your web filter. Okay. DNS filter. It's a part of live. So live queries is a part of these. Okay. Now what happens is in the live query, um, um, what happens in live query is that whenever a traffic comes to your Fortigate firewall, I'll just give you one liner. We'll anyway discuss this in great details in the web filtering, but just to give you a one liner, that uh, uh, live query is nothing but when, whenever, since I, let's say for example, I am a user and I want to access facebook.com. Okay. Now I have a web filter category of social media. And inside that I have said that all the social media categories will be blocked. Okay. I have uh, under the web filter, I have already uh, created a web filter that if, if anybody's, uh, you know, trying to access uh, a social media, it website, it will be blocked. Okay. Now, how does the Fortigate firewall know that which website comes under uh, social media category? Okay. So that, that is where your Fortigate server comes into play. Okay. Fortigate will make a request as soon as let's say a user traffic comes to your Fortigate firewall. Okay. So let's say this is FGT. Okay. So I am a happy user and in the lunchtime I'm trying to access Facebook. Okay. Now over here, the social media category is blocked. Okay. Now what happens is as soon as I receive this traffic, Fortigate is going to look and check, okay, this particular user is trying to access FP. Um, let me just quickly check my web filter. Now web filter says social media category blocked, but Facebook, uh, sorry, Fortigate does not know that Facebook is a social media, social media website. Okay. It does not have that in that kind of intelligence. It only knows this is a website. So what does this FortiGuard does is that it's going to do a live query to your FortiGuard server. And it is going to ask, Hey, you know what? Somebody is coming with facebook.com, um, which category it is. So FortiGuard is going to say, Hey, you know what? This is a social media category. So FortiGate will go ahead and say, Oh, okay. This is blocked. I cannot allow this guy to, you know, access Facebook. So go ahead and talk about it. Okay. That is what live queries basically mean. Okay. So again, um, I'm actually winking, but, uh, question on NAC4 examination, what is the name of, uh, you know, live queries. So what URL the traffic goes when, when it is going for a live query service.fortycard.net and secure wff.fortycard.net. Okay. Note this down, learn it or whatever you want to do. If anybody you are going for a certification, make sure you know this. Next. Okay. So this is anyway, this document is available to you guys. So you would be able to, you know, go through this, but I want you guys to make notes. Reason is that, um, um having a documentation, um, is, is just like a personal satisfaction, psychological satisfaction that I, okay, I have all the notes. Okay. But it won't stay in your mind. You make notes while you're, 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 you know, on the session and it will stay with you. That's how our, you know, minds are designed unfortunately or unfortunately from childhood. Okay. So 40 guard subscription services, 40 guard, third party SSL certificate verification, OCSP stapling check. What does this mean? 
okay again uh, we are going to cover this in the um, certification uh, topic but uh, in very short one line this basically means that uh, whatever website that you access is it really valid website or not that is what uh, the fortigate will check okay default fortigate access mode uh, is any cast optimize the routing performance to the fortigate servers and um, fortigate gets a single ip address of the domain name for each fortigate service basically in a way it says that um, you will have a url for all the kind of features and functionalities that you have configured and whenever there is whenever you need to make a um, a query to the fortigate server it will go to a specific url okay so for example let's look over here if there is an object that needs to be downloaded so it will go to global update dot fortinet dot net okay if it needs to uh, do some kind of a query okay over here so it will go to global guard service dot fortinet dot net fortigate cloud logging so if you have cloud logging so this is the url okay cloud management this is the url so again um this is just an interesting fact it is not something which is being asked on the uh, certification okay so if you know great if you do not know not to really release something which you need to be bothered about it. okay all right so now let's check okay so which protocol does fortigate use to download antivirus and ips it's tcp okay obviously because it, the traffic is going to 443 right so it has to be tcp common sense how does fortigate check content for spam and malicious websites live queries to fortigate okay so any thing which uh, needs to be allowed or not it is going to do a live check first okay and then if it is allowed or uh, not according to whatever the category that particular website belongs to then it will allow or deny that traffic okay okay next is basic administration which is basically how to configure the fortigate firewall that is one thing which i would like to you know take you guys on a practical experience because i mean tpt does not really do a good job with that okay so let me go ahead and stop this for now okay all right now uh, hmm. Let's do one thing. Um, so we we will. I'll just take this. Um, I I can see a lot of questions coming in. Okay, hold on. Um, let me share this with you guys. Okay, so um, let me quickly answer this first. So, um, any way to get the information about the hardware chip NP seven six from the CLI or the GUI? Yes, you have. Uh, um, you can you can get that information. There are a couple of commands. Okay, that you can execute to get that information. Okay, um, Kripasindu, just do one thing. Maybe uh, by tomorrow you let me know. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll share those. Uh, I'll basically show you how to get those information because again, see, we are in the VMware, so we will not be able to. We cannot execute those commands for very obvious reasons because we do not have those things. It's a hardware command, so it will only work on hardware models. So maybe something which is on your, um, um, you know, uh, in something which is on your company, you can basically run those commands. Okay, so I'll just uh, I'll what I'll do is I'll probably put this in the group. Okay. Now, next question: If I continue with the old stable firmware, there will be no problem for getting the updated rate of antivirus and FS. No, it's absolutely fine. See, uh, what happens is um, the it it doesn't matter that what um, you know device or firmware that you are part of. What what basically is considered is that it is your license. I mean, if your license is still valid. Then you do not have to worry about anything. Your license is a verification that you will keep on getting updates. Okay. If you do not have the um, um, you know license with you, yes, then you then it is to worry about. But then if you have license, do not worry. You will still keep on getting a lot of people and a lot of companies. Uh, they have still they are still on five point um, six, and there are companies who are on six point zero six point. Two 
okay they are not moving forward to a newer, newer firmware just because of the reason is that because everything is working fine they have everything in a stable condition there is no challenges coming up so why to you know upgrade and maybe you know um, open doors to some bugs or something like that so that is that is again their people do not really move on to the next uh, upgrade until this it is required or maybe it is a necessity or maybe there is an open bug and you need to fix that to you need to upgrade to fix that bug so if you are on a stable firmware if you have the license do not worry about it okay so davis has spu st have all the traffic why 70 percent no so what i mean is that um, according to whatever your device is okay so on the basis of that uh, majority of the traffic should be handled by um, your, uh, your your ASIC 40 ASIC chips. Okay, it's it's not something which is it, which is supposed to be every time. No, because a lot of times the configuration differs in all the firewalls. And how do you do that? That makes a lot of difference. Okay, so it's not it's seventy percent is just there are certain firewalls where I've seen uh, the traffic being handled by those 40 ASIC chips at seventy percent of traffic. It was configured to do that. Okay, but if you do not make any changes, if it is in the default settings, so you may be around be looking at 30%, 40%, something like that, even low, or maybe it could be higher. Again, this is something which is very specific to the environments, to the configuration. So I cannot make it a point that, okay, it is supposed to be like this one. Okay. All right. So the next is uh, transparent mode only have to, no, so I think I answered that question. So. Detain says packet flow of the forty-eight firewall. Uh, I think detain tomorrow we are going to talk about that. Okay. Um, next is um, see why am I uh, doing the basic configuration today is that uh, uh, you once you get a hang of uh, how exactly the firewall is working, right? And then if I explain you the packet flow, it will make much more sense to you. Otherwise, I'll keep on you know telling it will be like a theoretical session, maybe a boring session is there. But you know, you I want you guys to understand that from a practical perspective as well. So that's why uh, a little basic configuration and then you know the packet flow. Okay, but don't worry, it, it is covered, so you will go through it. Okay. Uh, next is um, um oh I lost it. Oh, okay, Shrikan. So if the firewall is in transparent mode and the interface doesn't have IP addresses, how we manage the firewall like management login? Oh, good question. Okay. So what happens is in this kind of situation, um, you will have a management port that will be a dedicated management port uh, out of band. And through that, you will be logging into your Fortigate firewall. So in the transparent mode, what happens is only one interface will be the one which you can give an IP address. It will be acting as a management port. Nothing more apart from that. You can get the CLI access, you can get the GUI access, that is it. And you can basically monitor and make changes to the firewall and everything. It will be out of band, something which is not a part of your network. So you have to, you know, maybe make some changes or maybe add that interface to um, a management traffic VLAN and then access the firewall. Okay, but you only have one interface which will be acting as a uh, management interface and only will be used for uh, logging in, making changes, and looking into what the firewall is, what, what the firewall is basically doing. Okay, I hope that answers your question. If in case yes, you can uh, put it in the chat box, or if you want more clarification, also put it in the chat box. Okay, next is uh, if you want to deploy the new firewall in production, then what step? will be required okay <laughs> that's a very open question so when we are deploying a new firewall what is uh, required is that you should know that what kind of uh, you know uh, implementation your company is looking for is it a vpn implementation or maybe let's say for example you already have a different firewall which was working now you're migrating on the traffic so again literally that's a very um, open question maybe maybe after the class we can discuss about it you know one to one so uh, that will make much more sense Okay, next is, um, does UTM firewall also taking um, all the updates from the footing? Yes, so uh, UTM, so antivirus, web filtering, application control, IPS, this is all a part of your UTM, okay? So all these updates are taken, any kind of update basically is taken by your footing card server. okay? It's like only, so can you can your Microsoft Windows can take update from, let's say, any other, um, you know, uh, a vendor apart from Microsoft? No, because when it comes to Windows platform, it will only take updates from the uh, Microsoft service, right? So it's exactly like that. Since you are uh, working with the 40 OS, 
it will only take updates from the 40 gigs server. So, okay. Um, Debbie has does 40 gig keep a local 40 gig local cache. Um, yes, it does. For 60 minutes, it does take that. So what happens is, let's say, for example, if, if somebody is trying to access Facebook, now after 10 minutes, again, somebody is trying to access Facebook. So it's not that Fortigate will again and again, you know, do a query uh, every time. It will keep a cache copy and, and you can change that actually. So uh, you can keep a, a copy of your cache for maybe 60 minutes or even one day or two days or whatever you want. Okay. So that that is possible. Okay, uh, do we have to connect one interface and transfer in mode? So see, when it comes to transfer in mode, there's nothing as in van interface or LAN interface. It is just the port numbers, port two, three, five, seven, whatever it is. Or, or if it is does have, um, you know, LAN interface or van interface, then yes. Okay, uh, you you need to you will know that okay, this the traffic when it is going out, uh, it is taking you know this particular interface. So let me configure the van interface as an out interface and let me configure my LAN interface has a um, you know ingress interface okay so it's not that it is a requirement it is just that whenever wherever you are putting your firewall in the transparent mode you will know that which part of the network is the egress part or where the traffic is going out on the internet or maybe onto the dmz server so on that particular uh, uh, direction you will be putting your van port if it is mentioning on the firewall as van port Otherwise, whatever the port number it is, that it will be mentioning. Does that does, does that answer your question, Pushkar? You can put it in the chat box. Okay, great. Uh, Nitin has a question. Uh, live check will happen for every packet, even if you have updated web printer databases on a packet. Um, live check will happen for every packet, even if you have the updated web filter database. Um, I think that is answered in the question of that whether it keeps a local cache of it right so again if i'm accessing a website and somebody else is also accessing the web same website so the footing guard will keep a cache of it and it will know that okay facebook is basically a part of the social media category and um, there is another request which is coming for the same um, destination or the same website so I know that this is a social media category. So I'll not again request for a live query. I'll just go ahead and use this cache and deny the traffic or allow the traffic, whatever the case may be. Uh, okay, Nathan, does that answer your question? Okay, all right. So I think that's pretty much it. We do not have more. Uh, let me just quickly check, let me refresh. Okay, got it. So um, it's seven oh five. Okay, we still have time. So let's go ahead and uh, remove this first. Hmm. So where is the Eve? Got it. Let me power this guy on. Okay. Now. Uh, Nilesh, I missed out your questions. Can you uh, put that again, please? Or you can you can add it in the link. Just link uh, put uh, you know click on the link and you will be getting the access. You can put it over by your own. So it's not something that I can do. All right. So I'm just um, powering up. So guys, are you all of you have uh, access to your uh, uh, lab, right? If anybody has not yet done the, I'm not able to access the link. Why? Hold on. Let's try again. You should be able to because it's open actually. Okay. Anyway, so let's come back. Put it not. So I'll open this. Ah, okay. So my session locked out. Guys, this would happen to you as well, that you are powered on and maybe you lo you left the session for some time and uh, when you click on it, you still get the login page and then you're putting in your username and password and it is not happening. Anything. Okay, so log out and log in back again. Admin E. <coughs> oh, I made a mistake. Hold on. Admin E. Nilesh, were you able to access the link? If not, tell me. Okay. 
close now. Let's open this up. Okay, I think I got the access now. Okay. All right, now let's do one thing. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And now we all know that um, if you are doing this for the first time and you're logging in, what is the default username and password? Can somebody tell me in the chat box what is the default username and password? Okay, so Jason is admin. Okay. So Devi Pushka. Okay, good. I, that I, this is good. You guys, are, you guys are really active. Password is blank. Yes. Admin, nothing. Yeah. Okay, done. So you are forced to change the password. So let's, uh, I'll take the strongest password in the world, which is password. Confirm password, password, done. Okay. So Nelly has done submitted the question, great. Okay. So now the first thing that you need to check whenever you are going to log into the Puttigate firewall, not every time, but um, you should know this. Get system interface. Now, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. It's not the get system interface, it's get system status. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to talk about this in great, 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 great details. Okay, sorry, I'm a little, um, you know, I don't know, I'm in a very happy mood today. Okay, so get system status. So what does it basically talks about? So the first thing is, why do you need to execute this command even at the first place, right? Why do you need this? Exam question. Okay. Um, they will, I mean, in the examination, you, you will not get this. Okay. It will be maybe grayed out or maybe something like that. Okay. You will, maybe you'll get just like this. Um, okay. So let me show you what I got. I got this. Okay. This is what I got. <laughs> Sorry. This is what I got. And the question was, uh, what, uh, looking at the output, what command can you use to know this information? Okay. That was the, that was the question. Okay. So now, you know, get system status. Okay. So if you want to know the firmware, get system status, you'll know over here that, um, what is the firmware version? So for us, it is a VM 64, right? For you, it would be whatever the model that you are on. So let's say hundred E. Or let's say 1100D, okay, or whatever the case might be, right? Next is the databases, as in the virus databases, okay? You can see the IPS database, the application database, right? Now, if you look closely, you see this 2018, wow, that's, that's quite old. It's like four years old, okay? Now, this is the default um, database, the default database, okay? Um, you need to have an active license to update them. If you do not have any license, then of course these will remain dormant or these will not be updated. And it's absolutely and it's fine because we are anyway, you know, trying and testing things in the environment in the lab environment, right? So, but then yes, um, what you actually are looking for over here is that you should be getting value something like this 2022. 20, uh, zero four dot uh today is 16 right so 16 and um let's say 18 dot sorry let's say okay so you will know that okay the last update on my virus database was 30 minutes back okay worst case scenario it could be one day it should not go beyond that okay you should be checking this um, you can check this from the GUI as well, as in, um, you know, when was the last time it communicated, but the best way to uh, check this is actually from the get system status. Okay. These values should be at least uh, on the same date, whatever the date you are on, at least on the same day, maximum one day. I mean, as in yesterday, okay. Should not go way beyond, uh, you know, should not be greater than one day. If it is two days, three days, or five days, or, or a week, then for for any reasons, your FortiGate firewall is not able to take updates from your FortiGuard server from the 
OT guard server. If it is going above two days, okay. Uh, anything which is on the same date or anything which is till yesterday, okay, you can consider fine. I mean, it's okay. But if it is going more than that, two days and above, then your 40 gate firewall is maybe because of some reason that is not able to take updates. Okay. Um, there's one thing more that you can do. Uh, a lot of time when you configure, please remind me when, when I'm taking a login page, right? I mean, the web GUI page, just remind me about the updates, the 40 guard updates. Okay. So what happens is a lot of time when you are configuring the 40 guard updates, you have, you, you have an option of schedule the updates. You can schedule your updates. Okay. Now let's say, for example, you are scheduling your updates at 1 AM in the night. Okay. So if you are up scheduling that in the one AM in the night, which is not wrong, a lot of people do that, but uh, let's say, for example, because of certain issues, your upstream router or your gateway had some issues or maybe some configuration issue, some configuration issue or whatever the case may be, you were not able to make that update at that period of time. Maybe an ISP issue, let's say everything is fine from your end. I and ISP, there was an ISP issue and you were not able to take the update. Okay. So the Fortigate firewall will, you know, um, take the next update by next day, 1 AM. Still not able to take an update again, problem, right? So if that's the case, always make sure that rather than scheduling this for a specific time of a day, make it by two hours, which is, which is actually too much <laughs> to ask. But six hours is maximum that you can go for. Okay, so every six hours it will make an update. It will it will try to make an attempt to update, which is a good number to have. Okay, next is so these these are the databases. Why do you need the database? What is the number and how to check those? Is it clear, all of you? Yes, no, maybe type it in the chat box, please. Why you have these databases and what's the point and what should be the ideal values? All right. Now the next is serial number. Very important. Okay. So um, the um, Shilmas put that in the link. I'll I'll again open up the session by seven fifty. Okay. Uh, you uh, okay. So basically, what happens is whenever you update, right? So you do not have to take an. It, it's not like you have to reboot the firewall. Okay. You do not have to reboot it. Okay. This is uh, incremental updates. Incremental update basically means that when you are taking an update, right, it will take the update fix. See, it's Linux machine, right? If 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 you know this, whenever a Linux machine is updating itself, it will never reboot. Only Windows systems are the one on this planet, on this damn planet, which takes updates and then reboots itself. Okay, so whenever you are maybe working on, so when I was working on the C, you know, certified ethical hacker, I was going through, you know, penetration testing softwares and I was updating a lot of things, you know, everything will, I mean, I have to update. So it, it, I mean, I never had to reboot my file, uh, reboot my system. And I was going through some articles as well. So it's, they were, they were also saying that, you know, when it, when it comes to Unix machine or uh, Linux machine, they do not have to update itself. They restart their services, which is, uh, exactly the same thing as rebooting the system. Okay. So it is a very windows thing to ask, which is absolutely fine. I mean, it's not that it's, uh, it's very, it's a general question. Okay. Next is the serial number. So see serial number, basically you, you would be, you, you would, you should know this if you want to look into the license category, if you are checking your licensing. Okay. And you want to know whether your license are valid or not, you need to know your, uh, serial number. Okay. And all your, uh, licenses are mapped to your serial number. Okay. For different vendors, it is different for some, I think it is the Mac address or something like that. Uh, I know about Sophos, I think, uh, for them, it's the Mac address, but uh, for 40 gate firewall, it is a serial number. Okay. Now the next is the expiration days as in the, this, see, we are working with the evaluation license, right? Sorry, spelling mistake. So we are working with the evaluation license and uh, for me, this will expire on May 1. Okay. Which is okay. A day before that, I'll probably, you know, um, do a wipe and save the configuration and that's pretty much it. And then wipe it again. So I'll again get the 15 days. Okay. Next is the VM resources. Now, again, for you, since it will be a hardware device, it will be um, whatever resources that you have. But for us, it is one CPU and only one is allowed. I cannot go above that. Even if you try, 
you can try this out actually if you want to experiment this up you can just go ahead and you know put in cpu maybe two two cpu cores or three cpu cores it will not restart it will again you know make itself one and then restart this is the amount of memory that you can go two gb of run you can go so if you put in 204 it it should take it up but 1024 is more than sufficient you do not really need um, to you know go above 2 gb yes if you are working on google cloud and you have 32 gb of ram absolutely go like you know have you have the luxury okay log hard disk um in previous batches actually i used to uh, you know add couple of commands and i gave you guys hard disk as well but actually it is not required because the amount of log information whatever we are going to configure is anyway you know i would be able to you know show you from the firewall itself so it's it's basically additional space which will take up from your 100 GB and I do not really want that. So that's why I do not take that. But um, you, in your hardware devices, you will see this. If it is an entry level device, you will exactly see like this, long hard disk not available because in the entry level devices, you do not have hard disks, okay? But on the medium level, on the higher end, you all the devices, all 40K devices have hard disk. Next is the host name, okay? So host name is about, you know, what exactly, so, so this is your host name, right? Oh, yeah. Now, whatever company that you're, you know, working with, uh, for every company, they have a different host name of their Fortigate firewall, depending on the, you know, which, um, uh, which segment they are a part of, or which department they are a part of, they give the uh, host name like that. So basically, it's, it's a name, how to individually identify that particular firewall. Okay. okay. Next is operation mode. So we have already discussed about this NAT and transparent, right? Now virtual domain. So by default, you do not have any virtual firewall in the uh, in, in your 40 gate firewall, but by default, it will show you root. So basically this is when you do not have any virtual firewalls. If you implement virtual firewalls, then you might get whatever firewall that you are part of, part of, but this is default. So you will always see root everywhere. Okay. Maximum number of virtual domains. You have one. See, we are in the evaluation license, right? So that is why one. But by default, if you have a hard disk, sorry, if you have a hardware, then 10 virtual domain is by default given to you for free. Now, in my companies or in my organization, I have a license for 100 virtual domains. Okay, now this is again, it's a license. You have to buy this license. So by default, how many you get? 10. Okay, that is default. If you want to have more than 10 virtual domains, okay, um, I'm assuming you should be having at least a medium level to high end device, okay, at least a 1000 series 40 gate model, okay, and if you are looking for more than 10 virtual domains, you need to buy license, you need to apply that license, and then once you do that, you will get whatever number of license you have. So 25, 30, 50. So there's no standard as in you can only have 25 and the next is 50. No, whatever the number that you want, you can have that um, on the basis of license that you have. That, that, that you can you know check with the sales team or maybe the partner. They would be able to let you know that what is the cost for it, if in case it is required. But by default, you get 10, okay? You do not need to pay anything um, extra for it, okay? All right, so next is, <clears throat> So virtual domain status, one in NAT mode and zero in transparent mode, of course. See, okay, the next is virtual domain configuration, disable, I mean, uh, in the evaluation license, you do not get to uh, work with the virtual domain, which we have already explained. So this is this is the only topic in the, in the class that I'll be going full theory, okay. Um, okay, so next is, uh, this is a standard, FIPS standard, so if you, are maybe a security vendor or maybe a security uh, company, then probably you need to go for a FIP certification as well. Okay, HA. So as of now, it's a standalone. All right. Now you can have an active active or an active passive. Again, it's an individual session. We are going to work on this uh, when once we reach there. So what is that? We are going to talk about that. Okay. But yes, uh, from the get system status, you can also note this. Okay, and there was a question to one of my students who was going through the NEC4. Um, it was a multiple choice question, and the question was basically something I, I do not really the I do not remember the exact question, but it was something to do with the HA. And the question was 
about what all commands you can use to know information about the HA. So he did select the get system statement. That's that's what I remember. So just make sure that you, when, whenever you are working on the get system status, you should know that you, <coughs> sorry. So you can know the 40 OS. You can know the database or UTM database. Okay. Next is you will know the serial number. You will know the um, expiry date. Okay. You can know the hard disk. Uh, you can know the virtual domains. You can know the HA. Okay. Now this is again the information about your operating system. Then you have the time, of course, that what time does your uh, firewall has right now. Okay. And you should check this uh, because a lot of time, uh, if you do not have the right, uh, correctly NTP configured, it could cause issues, maybe session problems or, or, or something like that. So make sure that your NTP is correctly configured on your firewall. Last reboot reason, power cycle. So if in case there was a reboot, um, then whatever, whatever the reason was, it will tell you that as well. Okay, now I got timed out, no problem. Okay, so let me log in back. Hold on. Now, once we are go, once we are done with the get systems status, I hope it it cleared a couple of your doubts. Okay, if anything that you would like to talk about, just use that link and you know let me know. Okay, next thing that I would like to talk about is um, it's quite interesting. I mean, for me. So there was a com there's a command which is uh, which goes by show system interface. Okay, so it's very simple to understand. I mean, the name it's the command itself basically tells you that I want uh, show me whatever the system interfaces that you have. Okay, so it shows me port one, two, three, four. Okay, and then you have the SSL root, which is for your SSL interface or your SSL VPN, and then you have something which is a 40 link. 40 link is nothing is just like a, uh, I mean, it's like a small, um, it's like a switch. You can add a um, couple of ports inside 40 link and they all will act as a native switch. That's it. That, that's what it basically means. And it is like a PAGP. And I, and I hope you guys know what is PAGP. It's basically an aggregation protocol. And uh, you can use this to basically uh, connect with any of your routers or switches, which is also working on the same uh, aggregation protocol. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. So the question is that this is show system interface. This will tell you how the configuration of every interface looks like. Okay. Is it clear? Now there is one more command, which is says, which says get system interface. Okay. Now the output is a little different as compared to show system interface. Okay. If you look closely, do you see this, this is port one, right? Now inside this port one, it says the mode is DHCP and this is the IP address. The status is up. Okay. So if I do a get system interface, I get this kind of a output. And if I do a show system interface, I get this kind of an output. Right. So what is the difference and why do we need it? Where should I use show system and where should I use get system? Okay. See what happens is show system will tell you how the interface is configured. Please note this down. You will not find this anywhere in the documentation. Okay. So show system interface will tell you how the interface is configured from the syntax point of view. Okay. How the syntax is. So if I have to configure the, let's say if I have to configure port one, I have to exactly run this command config system interface, edit port one, set VDOM, set mode, allow access ping, HTTP, and all that. Uh, this is default, by the way, and this is also default. Okay, so my point is if I have to know what is the right syntax to get into the interface, I'll use this. And what are the default configurations of the interface? I'll use show system. But if I need to know the outcome, the result, the output of the interface or whatever is configured on the interface, then I'll use this one. Get interface. So get is about the result or the output as in whatever is configured. So, so what is configured over here? It is configured to use DHCP, right? 
it is configured to use DHCP. So how I will I know this by using the show command? Okay. Now, what is the output of this DHCP? Meaning, this command was executed. <clears throat> it is saved in my FortiGate firewall. So, what was the output of this? So, I'll get this from the get system interface. So, I'll know that the configuration of the DHCP gave me an output of this. As in, this is the IP address. This is the output. So, you won't be able to see that information in the show system. You will see that only over here because this is the output of it. If you want to see the output of any command, you, you, you use get. You can use it anywhere. I mean, whatever the command is, so you can do that. Okay. Now there are certain commands in uh, certain commands with which you won't be able to use it, but uh, mostly you would be able to use it. Okay. All right. So I know that uh, because of the DHCP, the output is that I got this IP 192.168.0.8. Now all of you guys know. I am having the ENG in the range of 192.168.0.5 and 0 0.8 is also in the same segment. Now, what does it mean is pretty much simple. So 192.168.0.8. Should I be able to access this? 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8, yeah. Okay. So does it say anything else? Disable, explicit proxy, disable. So no. Does it, does it show me that what uh, services are configured? No. Now, did, did you notice one thing in my question? What did I ask? What service is configured? Get shows me the output, not the configuration. So if I want to show the config, if I need to see the configuration, what will I do? Show system interface. Okay. Over here i'll get to know that oh okay so i have configured this for ping https and ssh and fgfm okay so i know that um, in the evaluation mode the https will not work for me okay i need to have http enabled only then it will work for me now guys before i move forward does it make sense to you the show system and the get system are you able to understand what i'm trying to say are you able to understand what is the difference between these two yes type it in the chat box yes okay great hope this adds value to your mind okay so i know that if i have to access this ip address i have to add http because again we are in the evaluation instance so what I'll do is I know that uh, by you. So let me show you, show you this again, show system interface. Okay. Now I'll be able to, you know, um, um, I'll be able to see what all the configuration is. Okay. So Debbie has the question. Why can't we access with the HTTPS? Uh, Debbie put that question in the link, please. And, uh, we'll, we'll go with this question again. Okay. So Jitendra says very uh, in a one line. <laughs> okay, so I think he's a master of one liners. So he says that show system will display the configuration, get system will display the services. In a way, yes, you can say uh, services slash output basically you can say, and then this statement will make, will make much more sense. Okay, so sh anyways, coming back. So show system interface. Okay, when I do this, I see all the interfaces. Now let's say for example, I'm not in the mood to look into all the interfaces. Okay, I don't want to check all the interfaces. I say, show me just port one. So I say, show into show system interface, and I say port one. And I'm putting time actually, so it is automatically pop, uh, populating it. Okay, so I'll do this, enter, and that's it. So what will happen is that it, it is going to just show me that particular interface. So let's say, for example, I want to show port two. So I'll say port two, okay, and get port two. Let's say I want to have port four. That's it. Let's say I want to have port eight. Oh, no, no entry. So of course, because there's only four ports. So how, how can this guys show me, you know, port eight? Anyway, so now what I wanted to basically tell you is that if I want to make any changes, I will know what is the syntax. How can I go into the syntax of it? So I'll know from the show command. So I know this. Now, what will I do? I need to add HTTP, right? So config system interface enter now i am in the interface section now re try to relate relate this with the um, you know we had this um, in the routers you know global mode user mode privilege mode interface configuration mode do you remember all of you guys yes 
so try to relate from that as well so now we are in the in interface right what would you call this if it was a router if it was a cisco router what would you call this you would have called this as interface configuration mode right so what will happen is that config system inter although see there is no terminology as such in the fortigate firewall so do not get confused that you know it's it's a terminology that you can use no it's not i'm just trying to explain you that if you are getting into this particular space then what where exactly are you where where exactly in the in the firewall are you on okay because in the gui it is very simple you click on that and you will know that okay this is the page and it is showing all the interfaces but how will you know from the cli although it's easy to read but still you know you should know so interface now if i do a show command over here you know what will happen it will exactly give me the same output as show system interface because see show system interface basically tells me show me all the interface now i am inside the interface and i am saying show so again same same output okay you once you get a hang of it right it will become so easy for you guys okay so anyways now i'll say edit because I, so acha one thing do a question mark if you guys are doing this with me you can you can just put a question mark okay so the fortigate will tell you all the commands that you can start with all the commands that you can start with not all the commands that it can that you can make use because those will be hundreds and hundreds of uh, commands but these are the 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are the six commands that you can start working with one is edit basically to edit any of the interfaces delete of course to delete a, a interface or any configuration of it purge is that it will make, it's it's like a factory format so if you do this all the settings of the interfaces will go back to your default state get it's is basically the same as asking for get system interface then show again same and end and basically says end and save the last configuration so in router what we used to do when we used to configure uh, we we do a control z so we we come out and then we say copy running config startup config right but over here we do not have to do this over here we just say end and whatever changes that we have done it will be added automatically okay so end is that command for you now what i really need to do is inside the interface i have to edit port 1 so i'll say edit again do a question mark this you will learn faster with the question mark so do a question mark see what you get see there is a different way of uh, giving you the output over this is also one of the ways to look at what interface has what ip address okay so but this is only once you get in, inside the interfaces this is what you'll get okay so it says port 1 dhcp you have an ip address then port 2 3 4 doesn't have anything those are physical interfaces and all that stuff so now anyway i will go into port 1 enter so it will tell you that do you really want to go into port 1 so it will give a space and if the command is correctly if the command is correct i'll just hit enter again i hope this is making sense to you in case you are you may not able to you know follow to let me know or may ask me to you know slow down the time go in little faster so port 1 again i'll do a show command okay so now i know that okay this is how it is configured inside the interface okay now if i have to take access over here okay now https will not work right so let me show you so http colon for so for so let me try the second see it is not working right so i say set see i'll, I'll i'm just copying what is already written so set allow access ping and enter sorry let me do one thing so say i need http right so i'll say http do you know what 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 this will do a lot of people think that since i've added http so it has added ping https ssh and http no it is not like that do you know what has happened let me show you see do you see this since i've already since i've just said set allow access http it is only allowing access to http so now even if i'm trying to ping it will not work if i try to ssh it will not work if i try to https it's anyway not working but point of here is only http will work for me okay so if i have to allow uh, ping http https and ssh i have to write this down all of them okay so i say ping i need this 
oh sorry set allow access ping http app okay because https will not work anyway okay ssh okay and that's pretty much it i do not need anything else although there are so many other let me do a question mark let me show you what all options you have okay you see this you have https you have snmp you have telnet now nowadays why do anybody need that but anyways uh, fgfm for 40 manager access we are going to talk about this later uh, it is it is that if you are if you want your 40 gate firewall to be managed by your 40 manager then you allow this okay so if we have time maybe i'll integrate the 40 manager and i'll show you that as well then radius accounting if you if you want um, you know um, maybe authentication from the radius probe responses again it's a different thing we'll talk about that fabric is security fabric we'll talk about that and the ftm so ftm is again it's a different uh, device and a different functionality so we'll talk about that as well okay so now i know that these are the amount of uh, accesses uh, that i can you know work with okay so now let's talk about that I have already used the HTTP ping SSH, right? This is pretty much it that I need. I'll just hit enter. Now, if I do a show command, okay? So you can see that I have an access to ping SSH and HTTP. Now, let me refresh over here. Now, okay, um, I'll do a refresh, okay? So I made changes, but I haven't saved it, right? So if I have to save it, I'll say end, right? So, I'll say end. Okay, now the configuration is set. Okay, so now let's try again. See, got the page right. Now, to log in, what do I do? Admin and password. Okay, so this is a Google Chrome thing, so ignore that. Okay, now see, uh, once I logged in, now this will happen exactly in your uh, real environment as well. Okay, if you have a new firewall and you are trying to, you know, uh, log into that firewall for the first time, you will get this um, pop up, okay, where it is asking you to perform the following steps to complete the setup of this 40 firewall. Okay, specify the host name, which is by default there. Then it says change your password, uh, which we have already done. So that is why there's a check mark. In the dashboard setup, it is not a check mark. So I have to do that. And then you have the upgrade from there. So since it's a factory reset, so it feels like it has, you have already done that. Okay. Now either you can go on later or you can do a beginning. So if I click on begin, the first thing is it is asking for the host name because we haven't configured that as of now. It only has the default version. Okay. So you can um the one thing which we, we are on 48 north right so okay so i'll do this i'll change the name to fgt north okay click on okay now it is asking you for the dashboard setup so select one of the following options to decide what dashboard will be available by default you can always change your selection or manually customize your own dashboard so optimal is basically the you know the popular one or basically the default um widgets that you have you know the, what is the cpu utilization the memory and all that stuff comprehensive is like all the uh you know uh, security features and everything all the kind of widgets that is available you'll get that okay now see this is one this is um specific to who is logging in so since admin is logging in um i'm maybe getting the default one because i'm selecting optimal let's say admin 2 or admin 3 is logging in, he'll also get the same page so it is very the dashboard is very individual what ha, what ha, what the administrator has configured what kind of a dashboard he'll get that kind of a dashboard okay so i click on okay over here now the next thing is a pop-up of 40 os 7.0 okay where it is basically telling me what are the you you know the newer functional features and functionalities of 7.0 okay so we are anyway you know working on that so what you do is you click on this don't show again because otherwise whenever you log in you'll get this page i do not want that so click on okay see now this is the dashboard you you see this over here on the left left side you see 40 gate north and then you have a dashboard inside the dashboard you have status 
security, network, user devices, signaling, 4T view sources, 4T view destinations. So this is basically the top sources, top destination, top applications, top websites, top policies, and top sessions. Okay. So after a couple of uh, days of uh, testing and troubleshooting, you'll, these things will, will get filled up. Okay. So this is the dashboard. Okay. Now inside this dashboard, you can, you can check the information, which is present, right? So over here, you have the system information. So, you know, what is the host name, the serial number, firmware version, what is the time, what is the van IP and all that stuff over here, you have the licensing. So of course we do not have a license, but, uh, um, in your company as an amendment, you would definitely have 40 gate support 24.7. Um, and these, these will be green and check marked. Okay, and this should not be. And if it is, and if it is the case, then you that it says unable to connect to forty card servers. Please check your ISP's connection. Um, if in case there is any problems over there, or maybe an upstream router, or maybe some rule which is on the upstream which is blocking the traffic. Okay. Uh, then the virtual machine. Okay, so what kind of virtual machine I have? So allocated number of CPUs and the RAM. Okay, so the maximum I have one, and I have allocated that much. Maximum I can have two GB, out of which one GB is allocated. 40 gate cloud not supported, not working. Okay. So this, if you, if you want to remove any kind of a, um, a widget, okay. You can just click on this drop down and it says resize. So you can, you know, the amount of size that it takes, or you can go into settings to make any changes into it, or you can click on remove. Okay. So it will be removed because obviously we're not using that. Okay. Next is I'll put it over here. Okay. Now, again, this is very, you know, uh, interactive you can use this the way you want okay so anyways let let be like that okay so over here now we know that the amount of uh, administrator so admin is the guy who is logged in i just logged in right so admin is the guy who logged in and this is the profile okay so this is the profile that um, the admin guy has okay this is the user Now the next is security fabric that we have a different uh, session onto it. Although this does not really work well in the evaluation license, but then we are going to talk about this. Anyway. Okay. Next is the CPU utilization. So we know that the amount of CPU which is being handled right now is just 2%, which is okay. Ah, what is this? Okay. I don't know why this happened. Keep on happening to me. Okay. Remove. Okay. Yeah. So the amount of CPU utilization as of now, 2%. Okay. And see over here, you have one minute, right? So over here, you do have the option to, you know, uh, make this into 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, 12 hour and 24 hour. That's the maximum that you can get because see this, uh, this is a real time information. Okay. For anything uh, which is historical, you can either have 40 analyzer or you can have SNMP servers, or you can have monitoring servers, which, uh, which whose job is to basically monitor all these things and keep a, keep a data of it. Okay. So, but then yes, in the dashboard itself, you can select any one of these that you want. If in case you're troubleshooting on some scenario or situation, you can have 24 hours of data, which is available for in the graphic format. Okay. So if you keep it running, uh, you will also see this information. Okay. Okay. But then people who are working with the GCP, please do not keep it running. That's okay. Okay. So over here as well, you will get the same information over here as well. You get the same information. The only difference is that over here, you have the memory as in how much memory. So I see over here, 63% of memory is already being used without making any changes, no configuration, nothing. It's all default. Still 63% is being used. So you know that how much of the, how much is actually a 48 VM is taking. Okay. Next is the session. So it's 11 sessions because, uh, you know, what these sessions is because see over here, can, achha, who can tell me this? I have not opened any, any device. It's just the fire one, right? Still saying 11 sessions. What are these 11 sessions? Can anybody tell me in the chat box? We do this 30 minutes. Okay. So the maximum I have hit 15, right? <clears throat> So it says HTTPS session, SSH. Okay. What else? So she can't say this. What else do you think? What else could be this? She can't is partly right. 
antivirus IPS updates surpassing the um, actually correct is trying to go to the 40 card yes absolutely so uh, these connections are basically uh, of course the one which we are using on the web browser https http connection and a uh, couple of connections which the 40 card firewall is generating by itself to connect to the 40 card servers okay so that's why you are still getting you know 10 question 20 10 20 and all those things so they we also say http plus updates yes absolutely okay so this is your dashboard okay now the security and network and all these things will basically um, as of now will not have much details to work with uh, but network is about the number of routes that you have security is basically the compromised host top threats um, 40 client is a basically a software just like a cisco any kind okay and the host can summary so um, in the in the vmware you'll not get all these information if you have your company's uh, 40 gate firewall go through it you should be able to see some information and if in case you feel like there's any doubt do let me know okay so users and devices once we are into the authentication part then probably users and devices will make much more sense to you okay. all right so 40 view sources <clears throat> Will not have anything because uh, this is specific to the traffic which is coming from one port and going from another port. So basically, user traffic. So I do not have any user traffic or something. Okay. Now this is again you can you know switch. I mean, as of now it doesn't have anything. So now, but then if you have a hard disk or something like that, you can go with you know ten hours, ten hours, twelve hours more than that. Okay. So that's uh, that's all about the dashboard that we have. Okay. Now see the in the in the network section I have the interfaces right. So remember, I, I was also going through the interfaces over here as well, right? So this was show system interface. Now over here as well, I'm also getting the same information, right? Now uh, in the port one, this IP, I'm getting this IP from the DHCP, right? So if I click on edit, this is the place you click on edit. Okay. And in the GUI as well, you see that port one is a little, um, you know, uh, bigger than the other port. So if I select the second port, you see the second port gets a little bigger. If I select the third one, third one gets a little bigger. So in a way, you can also get to know information about at the physical uh, level that if I select the port three, it says it's a 10 gig port. It's a full duplex. It's an auto negotiation and it's a physical interface. Okay. So you can also get this information just by hovering over your hovering the mouse over the interface that you have. I was on port one, so I need to know. So either you can double click, either you can right click and uh, go into edit or you go over here. So there are three ways to go. Double click on it, right click and go into edit or just click on edit. Okay. Now see what information do you have. Alias is um, like a short name or whatever name that you want to give uh, to better, um, you know, understand what port this is. Okay. So for me, let's say this is this is a um, van port for me. Okay, so I'll say alias is van. Okay, it's a physical interface. Now, VRF, I mean, as in, uh, do you have to have any VLAN IDs and all that stuff? Uh, role is basically what role do you want? So now, LAN, van, and DMC, um, this is pre configured. Uh, if you click on van, you get an option to um, restrict the amount of uh, bandwidth, as in how much bandwidth, uh, upload and download uh, bandwidth do you want to put? If you want, you can absolutely go with that. If you do not want, you can keep it zero. Okay. Only if you have that category, then go with the role. Otherwise, undefined is fine. Okay. Now over here, you can see the addressing mode. All right. Now in the addressing mode, I see that uh, you have a couple of options. Okay. One is the manual. Then you have the DHCP. Okay. So the manual is basically if you want to statically, you know, configure an IP address. Okay. DHCP again, if you want to have, if you already have a DHCP server in your environment and you want to get an IP address from that DHCP server, so we we'll use that. Okay. All right. Now, what happens is that um, in, in this particular section, once you have connected, okay, uh, they will put the question in the link. So, um, what happens is when you, when you put this uh, in the DHCP, okay, what will happen is that uh, it will, of course, tell you the IP address that you have the expiry date as in what is the time frame okay now see this is something which is not configured on the firewall itself this is configured on your uh, dhcp server okay the time duration least time and least duration that you have okay the dns server again whatever the dhcp server has provided us and the gateway okay that's basic right so whenever you are having a dhcp this information you get okay now it says i have this option enabled 
uh, retrieve default gateway from the server. Now, if I disable this, then I can choose my own gateway. And this happens. Uh, DHCP server is not always the gateway. It, it is some somebody else, right? So either you can configure your DHCP server to share the gateway as a different IP, or from here, you can just disable this and put the gateway IP address as your own. Okay, so you can do that as well. Next is the distance as in, if in case you have multiple DHCP interfaces, then which interface should be taken into priority? Uh, the distance will you know, work on that. So it's, it's like the AD distance of the routing protocols. It's exactly the same. Override the internal DNS. So that basically means, uh, oh, do you see this option? DNS? It has uh, 40 guard DNS well, 40 guard DNSs. Okay, which is the default DNSs. Now, since we do not have a license, those 40 guard DNSs will not work for us. Okay. And since over here, it is an override internal DNS, this basically means that I will always use this IP 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. Okay. For any kind of DNS queries, I'll always use this. Okay. Because I'm overriding the internal DNS. I hope this makes sense to you. Okay. Next, administrative access, as in what kind of access are? Uh -huh. Okay, great. So administrative access is all about what kind of interface, what kind of access do you have on this interface? So we, we already did this on the CLI, right? We enabled HTTP, we enabled SSH and we enabled ping. Apart from this, you have the option to go for SNMP, security fabric, radius accounting, FTM, FMG access, and HTTP. Again, up to you what kind of access you want. Okay. Mostly people do go for the SNMP as well since they have an SS SNMP server in their organization. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you have the logical link protocol in your environment, then what kind of a setting you want over there? In the oh yeah, this is important. So see this one. Um, let me enable this. Okay. So network detection, sorry, device detection. What does this basically mean? Eh? Let's say, for example, um, you are connected to port three. Okay. So let's say your forty gate firewall is connected to this is port three. This is a switch, and this switch is a layer two switch, and then you have multiple pieces. Okay. Now over here, what will happen is. All of these have, let's say you have Windows over here, you have Mac over here, you have Linux over here. What will happen is this device detection will, will be able to detect which operating system you have, and then it will show you in the log section. So do you see this log and reports? Okay. So over here, you will see all kind of, so whatever is the source IP. So let's say this is, this guy is coming with 10.1.1.1. So it will, take, it will show you one column of source IP, the other column of uh, uh, platform, and it will show you Windows. Let's say this guy is 10. It will show you Mac. So, I mean, this this is how it will, you will be able to see that what IP is actually coming from which platform. Okay, is it is it clear? Or are you able to understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. Okay, good. Traffic shaping. Now, traffic shaping is... Um, Okay, um, although not part of the course, but then I'll explain this. So traffic shaping is basically when you want that, what, uh, I mean, if you want, let's say, for example, um, let's say, let's say you have 100 Mbps connection. You want um, that up from this 100 Mbps connection, um, all that uh, I'm putting a cap of 70 Mbps. Okay, because I don't want this, uh, uh, I don't want this interface to choke. Okay, so I am putting a cap of 70 or let's say 80, 80 Mbps. Okay, so there is a cap. So traffic shaping is about putting a cap um, on the interface that it should not go beyond uh, a bandwidth that you have set. Okay, so that is what is called as traffic shaping. Okay, uh, this needs to be configured individually. Okay, and you can create an interface, uh, sorry, you can create a policy um, a bandwidth policy which will tell which will tell that okay 80 mbps or 90 mbps is the maximum amount of bandwidth that you can use you cannot go above that so interface will always stay at 90 percent will not go above that every time okay and there's a lot of companies do that 
to make sure that their uh, ISP connection does not get choked up. Okay. And then you have the status of uh, enable and disable that uh, let's say for example, if in case you are troubleshooting, then also you can use this enable disable to figure out whether the interface is function functioning or not. Or let's say for a future configuration, you make some changes, but then you are right now, you're disabling it because you do not want, if anybody accidentally connected the cable, you do not want to you know, have certain implications out of it. So you can disable it as well. Okay. So now on the, if you look into the right side, okay, you can see that active administrator session. So you would be able to see that, okay, over here, one of the guys is basically logged in. Uh, the profile is super admin. This is the interface. This is the method. This is the IP address. Okay. So that's quite a good information to have. Okay. Apart from this, you can see the status as in, is it up or not? What, what is the MAC address? Um, at times when we are going uh, working on a very intense troubleshooting, then MAC address also comes into play. But, um, apart from that, very rare and probably say, you know, five to 10% out of 10 cases, maybe a one case or two case you, where you might need to know what exactly the Mac is and is, is the art functioning correctly or not and that stuff. Okay. All right. So I think, um, um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, con we'll continue, uh, tomorrow with respect to, you know, the administrators, the DNS and the static routes and all those things and how to take a backup and all those things. We will continue that tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will be a full fledged uh, practical session. No theory, um, no bullshitting, only practicals. Okay. So tomorrow is that class. Okay. Um, let me just quickly check before, uh, before I move on, if we have something. Um, okay. Uh, 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 uh. We have a couple of questions over here. I think this is clear. So SPR hardware chips, then how 40 gate VM works without these chips. So again, SPUs are something which is very specific uh, to hardware. VM does not work on it. Okay. VM does not have that capability. Okay. How CPU identify which packet should go to CP and which one to SP. Again, it depends. See, see, so when, when the traffic comes into your 40 gate firewall, right, then it basically, um, I mean, there's so, so see security processor and network processor. These are the chips, which is embedded with the interface itself, right? So as soon as the traffic comes in, okay, it, the, the network processor starts to work on it. So it's, it's not that it has to go to the CPU, even before the CPU, it goes over there. Content processor is basically, basically the one which is uh, looking for encryption and decryption and it, and it is not a part of your network interfaces, right? Since it is not a part of your network interfaces, then, um, the traffic goes to your CPU first, and then the CPU decides whether if, if the, if, if it, if the policies and everything allows for any encryption or decryption, then the traffic will go, go to your, um, uh, to your content processor. Otherwise not. Okay. Is VDOM different from VM firewall? No, it's VDOM is basically the same thing. It's a virtual firewall. Uh, it's just that you will be creating this inside the 40 k firewall. Okay. And Nilesh, in case you, uh, if you're not. I mean, if there is anything that you would like to add, just let me know. Okay. So don't you think live queries for every packet will slow down the processing? Absolutely. But then it is not that for every query, uh, for every, uh, request, which is coming in, there will be a query. No. So what will happen is that, um, uh, I think I, I think I've answered this. So, uh, you can keep the, uh, uh, a cache of the queries for 60 minutes and 120 minutes, and you can go above that as well. So till that time, if there is a query coming in for the same website, it will not go for a live query. It will just, you know, use the same cache and uh, give the response back. Okay. Then we have Srinivas. Uh, if we do any kind of customization, customization, and after upgrade, it might not get the same thing back as the feature doesn't exist anymore. Can we downgrade? Uh, can we downgrade the OS version? How does the license fee works on? 
OS upgrader. See the license that you have. Okay, those licenses are basically for UTM, as in antivirus application, IPS, and all that stuff. It doesn't matter what firmware version that you're on. So if if let's say for example you are on seven point zero, now tomorrow you decide to go to uh, tomorrow you decide to go to seven point two. Okay, it's it's absolutely fine because um, the licenses does not uh, worry about the firmware version. They just check the serial number and does that serial have the contract for the next two years or three years and and for your UTM profiles as an AV and IPS. So because even with the seven point zero you'll have the AV and IPS and with seven point two also you'll have the AV and IPS. So it only functions on the serial number. Not it does not matter what OS version that you are on. Now coming back to you, the first question: If we do customization after the upgrade, it might not get the same thing as Mac as the feature doesn't exist. And though we can we downgrade? So see what happens is, let's say for example, you you did do a customization and um, you upgraded the device and and it breaks, which happens a lot. It's absolutely true. And uh, if that is the case, you can go for a downgrade. Yes, you can. But you just need to make sure that whatever customization that you did, okay, you 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 have a backup of it. Okay, whatever configuration, whatever customization that you did, you have a backup of it. Once you have the backup of it, you can do a downgrade and then make it work. If you do not have a backup, then you might have to do a manual configuration again. But but yes, downgrade is an option. We tag people will basically will not suggest you, but uh, I mean there are situations where you have to downgrade. When you upgrade, there is some bug. Your services network is not working the way it is supposed to. In that case, you do have to downgrade. and that is possible no problem set up whatever customization is if you have the backup great if you do not you might have to do the manual configuration again but yes to give you an answer in a very short term yes it is possible okay next is um, devi uh, can we know since when my system is up yes absolutely um let me show you hold on and when password oops hold on Never. Dashboard status. So, see over here. Do you see this uptime? It says fifty-eight minutes. So, uh, it. I mean, an hour back, I powered this guy up. So, it's been up from there. So, a lot of your um, organization might have this. Uh, maybe six months, eight months, one year, even more than that. Okay. So, this is the base under the dashboard status system information. You'll get this information. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is. um what is the fgfm service uh, fgfm is basically for your forty manager okay if you want to integrate your forty gate firewall with the forty manager and you want to push every configuration from your forty manager then you have to enable the fgfm okay all right uh, why can't we access with the https so the reason is we are having first of all is the evaluation license first thing uh, evaluation license does not allow you to work with the https okay so you cannot do deep scanning or all those things okay first second uh, is that if you want to enable the https even if you have a licensed version okay and you are accessing through a public ip you will get a certificate other right so you have to buy a certificate first for your fortigate firewall and once you have that fortigate firewall certification then you can access through the https but with the evaluation it is not possible but if you have a licensed version yes you can do it ankur says how to create multiple forty links see uh, forty links is just one interface you cannot create more than that it's 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 a hardware uh, which has been given to be used like that so you cannot create more than yes you can add interfaces to it but can't have more than one okay now the next is um, can you repeat the role section okay i'll come back to this um, explain device detection once more okay and for so um, can we apply different uh, traffic shaping for different vlans will that be um, going with packets flow will be without any risk yes you can apply uh, traffic shaping with different vlans because what will happen is once you create uh, different vlans right you need to create different uh, interfaces or different vlan ids on the firewall also okay so you can absolutely go ahead and apply the traffic shaping there will not be packet loss it is just that if you so so it's it's just that i'm capping at 80 mbps so basically this means that uh, the traffic um, if it is going above 80 mbps it will slow down a little bit but there will be no packet loss as such 
Yes, I mean, if the traffic is coming at a very huge speed, let's say, for example, I'm, if I'm not if I'm not bottlenecking, what is bottlenecking? Meaning, let's say the communication or the traffic which is coming in, it's around 200 or 300 Mbps. I'm capping it at 80 Mbps. Of course, there will be packet loss. Okay. But let's say, for example, the speed is 100 Mbps. Your whole network is on 100 Mbps connections. All your Ethernet cables are on your 100 Mbps connections. And then if I'm capping at 80 or 90 Mbps, there will be no packet loss. You can expect a little slowness whenever you are hitting uh, that amount, uh, but no packet loss as such. But yes, um, there are always chances of having maybe 1% to 5% of packet loss. Okay. Again, rare situations, but yes. Um, do we need to have a separate license for different domain? Absolutely. So till uh, 10 virtual domains, you do not have to have any licensing, but above, uh, if you go above that, you need to have that. Okay. Can we set MTO on the interface? Absolutely, you can do that. Okay. Um, there were two things which I had to follow, right? Um, uh, role section and device detection. Okay. All right. So let's come on the network interfaces and take one of the interface again. Hmm. See, the first is the low role. So if you select LAN, okay, it is just a way of telling your FortiGate firewall. See, I'll show you again. Settings which do not apply to the current role will be hidden. Okay. Um, it doesn't say anything. So see, LAN basically gives you info. I mean, it, it will um, give you the settings, which from the FortiGate point of view is a LAN setting, meaning some um, the manual configuration, DHCP configuration, administrative access, device detection, all these things. So you need this in a LAN setup as well. So that is why it will give you those um, settings. If I say WAN, it will give me an additional setting of bandwidth, which you will not find in the LAN. Why? Because in the bandwidth, I can limit, I can cap it to certain um, uh, number of uh, upstream and downstream. Now see, the only limitation is because I know there will be a question that if, uh, if I'm doing a uh, capping over here, then uh, what is this? The traffic shopping. See, uh, what happens over here is, is you have to mention everything in the KBPS. Over here, if you're doing the shaping, you can do in the MBPS, you can do in the GBPS, it's up to you. And then this is much more granular. You can do I, uh, traffic shaping on the interface level as well. Okay, sorry, IP address level as well. All right, so this is much more granular. The role over here gives you just a basic understanding of how the uh, setup would work for you. Okay, if you want to do a capping over here, just only, then you can do that. So that is why this is a setting which is very specific to the van. Okay, not, not, you will not find this in the land section. Go into the DMZ section. Okay, now in the DMZ section, you are also getting the same kind of information, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so role basically as per the FortiGate's point of view, what all options you should have and what all you should not have, that is what you get. Undefined basically, you, you do not really know. So you can have whatever configuration that you want. So that is the role. So, but what happens in most of the, um, cases and situations, I have not used this role because this doesn't personally doesn't really make uh, much a difference to me, to be very honest. So I do not use it. I use the alias just to understand whether the traffic, whether the port is a, a LAN port or a DMZ port or something like that. Okay. Now device detection is again, as I said, that uh, if in case you have a couple of devices of Windows and uh, Mac and Linux, Okay, and those are directly connected to a L2 switch, and then that L2 switch is connected to my um, um, my inter inter my uh, port that I have. So port three or port one, let's say for example. Okay, then my FortiGate firewall has the capacity to check the traffic and understand that if this whatever the traffic is coming in, is it is it a, um, a Windows traffic or is it a Linux traffic? this FortiGate firewall will be able to identify that. But only if you have a layer two switch in, in between, if you have a layer three switch, you cannot make it work. If you, uh, there's, a, there's a document on device detection. So if you go through it, there is a prerequisite and it says that you need to have a layer two switch only because with layer two switch, you would be, uh, the FortiGate firewall will be able to detect uh, what kind of um, vendor the traffic is coming from. Is it Windows or Mac or Linux? Okay, but if it is a layer three, 
uh, Fortigate won't be able to identify. So this device detection is just like an additional feature if you want to use or if it can be used, you can, otherwise not. Okay. Um, so Venkat says override internal DNS, override internal DNS. Okay, so override internal DNS is basically, see over here, let me show you. Do you see this? 20891, okay. So over here, this is the DNS server, which is um, being used by the Forticard server, but it is grayed out. Do you know why? Because I cannot make use of it. I can only use 1.1.1.1. Why? Because at the interface level, I am saying to override the DNS, internal DNS. Does it make sense now, Venkat? Okay, all right. Chalo. All right, guys. So um, now let's do one thing. I'll uh, I'll conclude the session today over here, and um, we'll meet tomorrow um, same time. And maybe let let's meet up a little early, maybe five ten minutes early. Okay. So we'll discuss uh, whatever you want to discuss about. And um, tomorrow we are going to talk about administrator profiles, configuration backups, and uh, restriction of of your. Uh, um, admin access to specific IP addresses and all that stuff. So we are going to cover all those things tomorrow. Okay. So people who have not yet uh, configured the lab, uh, the link which I've shared today, please go through it and uh, take help from those video and um, you know make sure that by tomorrow six o'clock you have your lab ready. Okay. So that's what we are going to do tomorrow. All right. So all right. So let's uh, let's conclude the session and I'll see you guys tomorrow.